Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. In this video, I perform a cataract surgery for a patient with high astigmatism. Astigmatism causes blurry vision for both far and near. That's because with astigmatism, the eye focuses light rays asymmetrically. Reducing astigmatism will improve a patient's quality of vision. Astigmatism can be reduced with lens implants, such as the light adjustable lens, torque lens implants, and it can also be reduced with laser. In cases of high astigmatism, such as with this patient, a toric lens implant is needed. A toric lens will neutralize the asymmetry in the eye's optical system. In order to achieve our goal, the toric lens must be precisely positioned. Each degree of rotation of the toric lens implant away from the intended axis will decrease the astigmatism correction by 3.3%. So for example, if we are 10 degrees off our intended axis, our astigmatism correction would be 33% ineffective. And if we're 30 degrees off, we are not helping reduce the astigmatism at all. Well, in this case, the toric lens ends up rotating a lot, about 15 degrees. This occurs within a couple weeks after surgery. In this video, I'll show you the first surgery, how the lens rotated afterwards, and how we fix it. You are currently watching the video of the first surgery. I removed the cataract. I just finished removing the cortical material. I am now polishing the posterior capsule. The case is going very well so far. We removed the cataract without problem. We have a very nice round capsulorexis. We did it manually. We are polishing the posterior capsule and then power washing it with bound salt solution. Then we're gonna inflate the capsular bag with viscoelastic in preparation of the lens implant. But before we do that, we're gonna polish the anterior capsule, the posterior aspect of it, with the sweep polisher. After we polish the capsule, we're gonna implant an Aspire Toric Lens by BNL. I am sitting temporarily, so this is the orientation of the lens after we will implant it. The lens goes inside the bag without any problem. After putting it in the bag, I tilt the optic towards me because I'm going to remove the viscoelastic behind the lens. You want to try to get all the viscoelastic out, both behind the lens and then in front of the lens. So I take my time removing all the viscoelastic. I will also tap the lens a few times to encourage any viscoelastic to make its way forward. You really need to be thorough removing the viscoelastic. I am on full throttle and I'm going back and forth throughout the anterior chamber, tapping on the eye multiple times, rotating the lens as I'm flooring the aspiration to get rid of all the viscoelastic. And then I'm going to position the lens and align the marks of the torque lens with the marks on the cornea. After the lens is positioned where I think it needs to be, I use the aura to check an autorefraction. And this is not to change the power of the lens, but more so to check how much astigmatism I have left over. And it looks great. I even have less astigmatism than anticipated. And here the marks on the lens implant are just about where the marks on the cornea are. On day one, the patient is happy they are seeing 2025. But within two weeks, the vision worsened to 2040 and they have about two diopters of astigmatism in the autorefractor. I go to astigmatismfix.com and it says I have to rotate about 15 degrees clockwise. So the lens rotated about 15 degrees counterclockwise. Here you can see the end of the first surgery on the left and the start of the second surgery on the right. Although the patient was actually content with their vision, I wasn't. I knew that the lens implant was not in its proper position and that rotating it back would really help the patient see better for the rest of their life. And so I wanted to rotate it for them. And so here is the second surgery. Here I am marking the cornea 15 degrees clockwise to where the torque is currently aligned. The second surgery to rotate the torque IOL is nearly six weeks after the primary surgery. It's still important to mark the patient in the preoperative area because you never know if the lens implant has rotated more after you saw them at the slit lamp during the post-op period. With the preservative-free lidocaine, I'm seeing if I can irrigate the lens loose. 
but the lens implant is adhering to the capsular bag. So I'm going to use viscoelastic instead, making sure that the haptics are free from the capsular bag before I rotate. And it loosens up pretty easily because it hasn't been too long. And after I rotate the lens in the appropriate position, I'm just going to make sure that I remove the viscoelastic thoroughly. You don't want to leave behind any viscoelastic. So I'm going to take my time and make sure I remove all the viscoelastic. At the end of the case, the lens implant looks perfectly aligned, and this is reflected in the post-operative visit and refraction. The patient's vision is now 20-20 in this eye, and the auto-refraction just shows a quarter diopter of astigmatism. The toric axis marks are right where they're supposed to be at 91 degrees. Interestingly, the patient's other eye has a light adjustable lens plus, and the vision is 2015 in that eye. This eye had too much astigmatism for the light adjustable lens. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.